everyone, happy Cinco de Rhino Day! My name's Angie and I'm just one of a few greater one horn rhino keepers that work here at the Toronto Zoo. Today is Cinco de Rhino Day, May 5th. Actually it's not, it's Cinco de Mayo Day is the official holiday that is celebrated in Mexico on this day and it celebrates the Mexicans defeating the French in the mid 1800s. However, the International Rhino Foundation put a spin on that holiday and they've decided to make this day, May 5th, all about rhinos. So they've changed the name for an awareness campaign and a fundraising campaign called Cinco de Rhino. And that's because we're celebrating the remaining five species of rhinos that are left on the planet. There are three species that are from Southeast Asia, including the Greater One-Horned Rhino, the Sumatran Rhino, and the Javan Rhino. In Africa, there are the other two species, the African White Rhino and Black Rhino. But I want you to be sure to check in today to the Toronto Zoo's Facebook Live at one o'clock, where you'll be able to meet Desiree, who is the White Rhino Keeper. And she's gonna talk to you about all things African Rhino related. And I'm gonna talk to you today about the Southeast Asian species, specifically the Greater One Horned Rhinos. Now, as I mentioned, there are only five species of rhinos left on the planet. And the three that are from Southeast Asia are probably some of the most critically endangered in the world. The Sumatran rhino is considered to be the most critically endangered large mammal on the planet. And there's only 80 Sumatran rhinos left. The Javan rhino is also a very elusive species and there's only 72 Javan rhinos. Now you might be wondering, how is it that the Sumatran with 80 is more endangered than the Javan with 72? And that all has to do with where they live and how they're managed. The Javan rhinos, while there are only 72 of them, they live in a very specific area in the Ujan Kula National Park in Indonesia, in Java. And those rhinos are heavily protected and they have not had a rhino poaching in over 25 years. And while there are only 72, there have been instances of proof where they are breeding and babies are being born. So because of that reproductive success, they are less critically endangered than the Sumatran rhino. The Sumatran rhino, with maybe 80 left, are not finding each other to breed. And that is the main problem that they're facing in the wild today. Poaching and human encroachment, uh, taking up their land space, is forcing them to separate from each other and they're not finding each other to breed. Now the Sumatran rhino, Javan rhino, and the greater one-horned rhino are all considered a solitary species. So that means that they like to actually uh, be by themselves more often than hanging out together. The exception is our situation we have here where we've got Kieran, who's this little guy, little big guy now. Uh, he's two years old and he still lives with his mom, Asha. The greater one-horned rhino, these guys are actually quite a success story. And the reason for that is the government of India and Nepal have really worked hard and put serious pressures on protecting this species. And they have actually gone from numbers fewer than 100 animals in the early 1900s to over 3,600 animals today. And that is, again, all because of the protections put in place by the Indian and Nepalese governments. But the Toronto Zoo has actually played a really important role in the conservation of this species as well. For a number of years, we've been a part of the Greater one Horn Rhino Species Survival Plan. The Species Survival Plan is something that zoos belong to, ensuring genetic diversity and breeding successes. So Asha Kieran here has actually given birth to two boys. Kieran here is one of them. He's two years old, as I said. Here's mom, she's 15 year old female. Her birthday is in September, she'll be 16. Great. And we also had Nandu, and Nandu no longer is with us here at the Toronto Zoo. As per the SSP, he is grown up and he now has a breeding recommendation and he has moved to another facility where he is going to spread his genetic material to help keep greater one horned rhinos safe in here on our planet. So I haven't mentioned Dad. Dad is Vishnu and he is our 17 year old male greater one horned rhino. Uh, he does not share living space with mom and kiddo here. As I mentioned before, all three of the Southeast Asian species are very solitary. So in the wild, it is very natural 
for males not to live anywhere near females. And the only time they hang out with females is when they're tracking them because they can sense that one is about to go into an estrus and be ready for breeding. So we mimic that lifestyle here at the zoo. Greater one horned rhinos can be a little territorial and aggressive. So we certainly don't want any uh, accidents happening with our little guy. So we manage them as they would be in the wild and they're all kept separately with the exception of these two. Now all five species of rhino actually look very different from one another. The only two that are similar are the greater one horned rhino and the javan rhino. The javan rhino is also known as the lesser one horned rhino and they do look very similar to these guys, they are a little smaller. But the Southeast Asian species look even different than the African species. And I'm gonna to talk to you about some of those differences today. And again, another super cool thing about being able to visit the Toronto Zoo is that we actually house the two species of five that are left on the planet. And when you show up here at the zoo, you will be able to come and look at these differences for yourself with your own eyes. But since you can't come right now, I'm gonna to talk to you about those differences anyway. Now, one thing you can see, greater one horned rhinos are pigs, really. They love to eat. Kieran here is no exception, handfuls of food. Primarily, greater one horned rhinos eat hay. That is their main diet, but they also get a whole bunch of treats for training and uh, behind the scenes tours and such like that. Um, so they get apples and carrots, they get lettuce, they get bananas, cantaloupe, melons, all kinds of fun things limited quantities, but they are able to eat unlimited amounts of hay. Now one of the differences between white rhinos, rhinos and greater one horned rhinos is with their mouths. You can see Kieran here has this funny little lip. Oop, there you go. Now that lip is called the semi-prehensile lip and these rhinos use it to grab things like browse, delicious browse. So browse is considered trees and bushes. Now white rhinos' mouths are not shaped like this. They do not have that semi-prehensile lip. They actually have really wide mouths and their lips are super flat. And they think things like plants and bushes and trees are disgusting. They are basically the lawnmowers of Africa and they only eat grass. No trees, no bushes. The importance of the semi-prehensile lip when you are a plant eater, however, is to be able to get that plant. I'm making it nice and easy for Kieran here to be grabbing at this leaf. However, if I was really a tree, he would have to reach up and use that lip to grab that leaf and get it in his mouth where he'll use his big neck, strong neck, and he'll be able to pull the rest of the branch down and be able to eat the whole thing. Just like that. We'll get Ash to demonstrate too. So here's a tree, she's gonna use that big lip to get that branch in her mouth. And of course the branch is still attached to the tree, so you use your big strong neck to rip it down. Very handy. Slight other difference between them is with their necks. It's not really an obvious difference, but uh, being a big lawnmower, you just need to have your head on the ground eating grass. So white rhinos actually do not have a ton of flexibility in their neck compared to the greater one horned rhinos. Their heads are much smaller and their necks are much more flexible in order to be able to reach up and grab those tree branches. Now one of the main differences between white rhinos and greater one horned rhinos is with their horns. Like this name implies, the greater one horned rhino, these animals only have one horn and white rhinos have two horns. Now white rhinos actually use their horns for fighting and defense. Believe it or not, a white rhino can actually hook their horn underneath the back end of another rhino and flip them right upside down. Greater one horned rhinos, however, they do not use their horns for fighting. They instead, you're gonna show us, have two little teeth here in their bottom jaw. Now females' teeth do not grow very large, but Kieran, when he's a big male, let's see those teeth, nice, good job. When he's a big strong male, just like his dad, those canines will actually be really, really big. Right now he's just got little baby nubbins, good. <laughs> but they will literally grow to be about that tall and they are super sharp, razor sharp. So rhino, greater one horned rhinos actually gore each other when they fight, super friendly. And that leads me to one of the next differences between them. This species of rhino, 
looks like they're from a whole nother era. They look like dinosaurs, we get that a lot. Uh, or that, hey, they're wearing armor. They sure are. Now, no one knows exactly why Greater One Horn Rhinos are designed with all this extra skin folds and bumps and lumps and so on. Uh, but the theory is, is that if you actually are being gored by those super sharp teeth in a fight with another male, you need a little extra skin to perhaps protect those very important organs. So, the first area, most important you'll notice, is right around their neck. So you can see in here, Kieran's got some flanges around his neck, so does Asha Kieran, and they're really thick bits of skin. And that's probably going to help protect the jugular vein. Now if you look further down his side there, right over his shoulder, he's got another flap of skin. The thought is that that flap will help to protect the lungs and heart. And further along, right at the back of the body over his hip there, he's got another fold. And again, the thought is to help protect his kidney and his liver. Now again, no one knows for sure why they were designed this way, but uh, it certainly makes a lot of sense to me to have a little extra protection when you're fighting for a girl, hey? Great. Now another difference, I mentioned that these guys have those little teeth at the front. Uh, all the rest of Ash's teeth are way back here in the back of her mouth. Let's see if we can see those. Oh no, that's messy in there. It's a lot of food in there, Ash. Oh, good girl. So they have huge molars in the back of their mouth and they use that, of course, to grind up all this food and pl plant matter, uh, the large, large sticks and stuff that they eat. They need those big crunchers to break it all down for them. Now rhinos actually have terrible eyesight, and if you look in relation to the rest of their body, their eyes are pretty small. One indicator that that's not the best sense that they have. Hearing and sense of smell are what rhinos excel at. And these guys can actually turn on a dime if they hear something and they will face it. You might see Ash do something similar today. She's a little out of sorts. She is soon to go into a heat. So when she's in this stage of her cycle, uh, she gets very attuned to where that adult male might be. And that's what would be happening to her in a wild. She would have, have a procession of males following her that would be fighting for the opportunity to breed her when she finally gets into that heat cycle. So you may see her leave us and you might see her walking around. And if she does, just pay attention to what her head is doing. Her head will be very upright and erect. She'll be looking straight ahead with her ears forward. And that's pretty much alert mode for for a greater one-horned rhino. Also doesn't hurt that her kid is still here, so she needs to protect him at all costs, of course. <coughs> Ooh, but my goodness. Uh, so she's patrolling the exhibit, looking out for that male or anything else that might be bothering her today. And of course, in the back of her mind, she's making sure that her son here is, is safe. We weighed them last in January. We do have a portable scale that we're able to put them on. It's not a light scale, that's for sure, so we only weigh them a couple times a year. But doing that gives us a good idea of what their body condition is and how they're doing. But kiddo here, he weighed in at 2,500 pounds at just two years of age. So he is far from fully grown. He will reach sexual maturity and full size by the time he's 10 years old. He'll reach his full size a little bit sooner, but by the time he would actually need to be challenging other adult males, he would wait until he was about 10, where he's got maximum size, maximum strength, uh, ready to take on all those other adults. In the meantime, kid like this, he's hightailing it for the bushes, um, not understanding why that big male might be chasing him. So he's gonna run and hide. You'll notice Kieran's horn is also not very big compared to Ash's, and that's because rhinos are born without a horn. Right moms out there, that's really a good thing, isn't it? No horns when they're born. So this is two years worth of growth. Um, the white rhino's horns actually grow much faster than the greater one horns do. And again, they need those horns for fighting and protection. So even a little guy is gonna need the opportunity to defend himself. And a white rhino's horn grows the fastest in its first year of life, where the opposite is kind of true with these guys. You can see Kieran, what's important, it's not so much his horn, but those little teeth need to grow, and that's what's gonna help to defend him one day. All right guys, well I just wanted to thank everyone for joining me here today to talk a little bit about our greater one horn rhinos. I'm a little rusty on our keeper talks. We're missing you guys a lot, so we can't wait for you to come back and actually lay your own eyes on these animals. And don't forget to tune in today at one o'clock so that you'll be able to see what the white rhinos look like and all of the differences that I already talked about here today. 
So folks, happy Cinco de Rana!